Hi everyone, thank you for inviting me to speak about how Adrian Worthing Councils are meeting our carbon neutral 2030 target. For those of you I've not met, my name is Dan Goodchild and I am Carbon Reduction Manager for Ada and Worthing. Today I'm quickly going to run through how the councils have got to where we are at the moment, highlight what our current emissions are, run through some live projects that we are starting on the road to us being net zero by 2030, and finally highlight future projects and our potential trajectory to net zero carbon by 2030. So in 2017, the council's publicly available platforms for our places strategy document contained stewarding our natural resources as one of its five core strands that the council would work towards over the next few years. This was followed in 2018 by the launch of the Sustainable AW framework, setting out our approach to sustainability in the round, and we also adopted our first climate related targets, which at the time was 100% clean energy by 2050. Things really started picking up in 2019 when we, came, when we became the first council within West Sussex to declare a climate emergency and formally adopt a carbon neutral 2030 target. This target is explicitly for our own operational buildings and fleet and was followed up by the adoption of our carbon neutral plan at the end of the year. In 2020, Platforms for Our Places was refreshed, with the emphasis now explicitly on tackling climate change and supporting our natural environment. The first issue of the quarterly Sustainable AW magazine was launched in summer 2020, and the sustainability team grew from one to four people in September, as the carbon reduction team, which I lead, was created according, alongside a new sustainability officer post. That autumn also saw Sussex's first climate assembly launched with five sessions taking place between September and December. To bring us up to the start of this year and the projects I'm about to talk about, the councils adopted another new pledge through our membership of the UK 100 network of local authorities leading on climate action by committing to a net zero 2045 target for the district and borough as a whole, five years ahead of the UK wide target. We report on our emissions annually, and for the most recent financial year, they are broadly broken down as follows. 41% of our emissions are attributed to our fleet, 21% to electricity consumption, and 38% to emissions from gas. We find these figures have natural variability within them. For example, gas consumption is directly linked to the average winter temperature, but last year in particular was noteworthy because of the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic and the significant reduction in office use that saw electricity emissions decrease substantially. So on to what we're doing to actually decrease our emissions. The largest carbon reduction project we have is the Worthing Heat Network. This is planned to be a flagship low carbon heat network for Worthing Town Centre potentially replacing the gas boilers in two dozen or more public and private sector buildings and saving 3,000 tonnes of carbon annually. Heat is currently predicted to start being delivered to the civic water buildings in 2024, with the remainder of the network you can see on the slide following soon afterwards. The reason the heat network is so low carbon is because we're intending to use to meet the vast majority of heat demand by utilising waste heat from Worthing's main sewer. This is a combined sewer, and so does have significant fluctuations in both temperature and flow, as it transports not only wastewater from domestic and commercial premises, but runoff after rainfall. We've had a probe in the sewer for almost a year now, and this has confirmed that about 87% of the modelled heat demand can be met by extracting heat from the sewer using heat pump technology. This technology is already operational in the UK. However, however, as far as we're aware, this would be its largest deployment. And we are hoping that the network we are currently working on will be replicable across many towns and cities within the UK. Within the last few weeks, we've signed a grant funding agreement to the tune of five million pounds from Bayes' Heat Network Investment Project, which will help the council to let develop the project through to full business case and secure a private sector partner to run the network. As with all heat projects, it's not just about where the heat comes from, however, and we are looking at our buildings and our partners' buildings within the town centre to make them ready to connect to a heat network. 
To this end, we've received nearly half a million pounds from the government, government's public sector decarbonisation scheme to do fabric efficiency and distribution system upgrades to ensure that our buildings are ready for this new form of heat. As well as that successful bid for central government funding, we're also delivering other PSDS funded projects across our estate. One of these is on site as we speak, as we are degassing two of our sheltered housing sites by fully replacing their existing communal heating systems with low temperature, low carbon ground source heat pumps. Again, with appropriate insulation measures and this time with uh, solar PV in being installed on the roof to reduce running costs further. Elsewhere, we will soon be installing a number of air source heat pumps at the Shoreham Centre to run in parallel with the existing gas-fired plant to lower the building's reliance on fossil fuels. And we will be installing nearly 200 kilowatt peak of solar panels across six sites, with more hopefully to follow in the years to come. That leads us on nicely to where we need to do more and to how we see our emissions trajectory out to 2030. We've done some modelling internally and are currently working from, with colleagues from across the council to identify key intervention opportunities where securing additional capital funding can lock in low carbon technology for the future. The biggest three opportunities for this are when our, are when our refuse fleet requires replacement, although we have to ensure the right infrastructure is in place to maintain the existing level of service when gas boilers near the end of their life or when funding is available to replace them sooner and when the same occurs with the cremators at Worthing Crematorium. Using some very broad brush assumptions, we've modelled a potential trajectory to 2030 that should very much be read as a possible rather than definitive path for our emissions. And even with these assumptions, it unsurprisingly does still show some residual emissions by 2030 and as such, we are also working to, to develop projects that allow us to legitimately offset these residual emissions in line with government guidance on carbon accounting. Potential ideas include investment in renewable electricity generation, which is the red line on the graph, and through sequestration such as tree or kelp planting projects. However, by 2030, this is modeled to only be a very minor contribution as new biomass takes a number of years before it reaches its maximum sequestration potential. So uh, that's all for me from today. Thank you for inviting me to present uh, and I hope you are able to continue following our progress on this journey closely. Thank you very much.